Jack Phillips was born above a draper's shop in Farncombe. He learned Morse code working at the post office and went on to work on several liners after being employed by Marconi. The night Titanic hit the iceberg, Jack and his colleague Harold Bride were busy sending a backlog of passengers' messages. They received another warning of ice, this time from the ship closest to them, the SS Californian. Jack replied, Keep out. You're jamming my signal. I'm working Cape Race. The radio operator on the Californian turned off his equipment and went to bed. An hour later and Titanic was in trouble. Jack's CQD and SOS distress messages fell on deaf ears on the Californian, but they were picked up by his old friend Harold Cotton on the Carpathia. As she steamed to the rescue, freezing water began lapping at their ankles in the radio room. Bride put a life jacket on Jack as he doggedly continued to transmit. At one point, a stoker burst in and tried to take it off him. Harold Bride stabbed the stoker dead um, for trying to take Jack's um, life jacket. The stoker would have had a life jacket in his locker anyway. Bride later claimed he held the man and Jack knocked him out. Jack's final message to the Carpathia was more personal. Come as quickly as possible, old man. The engine room is filling up to the boilers. Then, at 2.17... That was the last anyone heard from Jack Phillips. He made it onto an upturned, collapsible lifeboat, but died. His body was never found. Two years later, the largest memorial to one person lost on the Titanic was opened in Godalming. As you can see in this rare footage, hundreds of people turned up. Among the great and the good, Jack's father on the right. Gertrude Jekyll, the garden designer, worked with four other women suffragists and they collected the money and they really wanted something of beauty and something of use. They didn't want a water fountain, they didn't want a medallion to be struck, they wanted something which people from Godalming could enjoy in future generations. Work to repair vandalism was completed with the help of a lottery grant of more than £300,000. But it's not the only memorial. One which hung in the post office where he worked had been missing for years, until very recently. A lady walked into the museum with this in a carrier bag and donated it to the museum. And Literally I, wandered through the front door. Just with it came in, the in through bag. the front door and, and I knew, because we'd been doing the research for the exhibition, I knew right away what it was and I was absolutely amazed and I'm afraid I swore in front of the visitors, which is something I try not to do. It was made by Jack's old headmaster. It's very much in the arts and crafts tradition of a, a rounded education and being able to work with your hands and certainly Jack's headmaster said about him that he wasn't particularly academic, but that he did work well with his hands and did have a high sense of duty. So perhaps it, it reflects what Jack was good at at school, as well as the headmaster's own skills. The 15th of April was Jack Phillips Day in Godalming, up until the 1950s, and there was a scout parade and people would fly the borough flag. That seems to have died off a bit locally, and what we very much hope with the centenary is he will be put back in his proper place. I imagine he'd approve of John Young's efforts to persuade a national pub chain to name its new pub the Jack Phillips. And I'm sure glasses will be raised to him when the Memorial Cloister reopens on Sunday. <laughs>